Hello, my friend and friends. A little while ago, I posted over on Twitter asking a question that I assume most people would get wrong. And I was right, most people did, though a surprising number of people actually knew the correct answer here, uh, which is just what the when this breakpoint would happen. Um, when you change it, we'll get to the answer to this in a bit and why most people get it wrong. But interestingly enough, somebody asked ChatGPT the same question and ChatGPT got it wrong in the same way that most people got it wrong. And I guess that's not surprising <laughs> in a sense because all of these LLMs are trained on people, <laughs> right? And there's a lot of bad information out there. And I've actually had questionable experience when it comes to CSS related questions and, and stuff with these LLMs. And I've been doing quizzes here on YouTube for quite a while now. So I thought, what if I ask the quiz questions I've been asking my audience to some of the different LLMs? So I decided to use Copilot, which is running GPT-4. I think it's GTP 4 oh. Uh, I don't know exactly though, Gemini and uh, Claude, because I've heard Claude is the best one. I don't have a lot of experience with it. And so we're gonna see how things went asking the questions to it. Some of them I'm gonna go over really quickly and the ones that gets wrong, uh, we're gonna sort of take a look at in a bit more detail and we'll keep score about which one best. I had 10 questions plus a bonus one at the end that wasn't multiple choice because I was also curious how the multiple choice stuff would affect it. So let's start off here uh, taking a look at using Copilot where I asked the exact same question here about when the breakpoint would happen and as I said it answered what most people said it would where it says that because one rem is equal to 32 pixels the equivalent would be 1120 and this is incorrect and I said it's there why so it's really quickly uh, the uh, media queries don't actually look at the unit of your HTML element. It looks at the unit, the initial value, which is coming from the browser. So it's whatever the browser settings are. And there's a good reason for that. It would cause a loop if not, because you could redefine the HTML font size within the media query, and then that would just potentially cause loops. So the units that media queries always look at, whatever they are, it's always gonna be looking at the initial unit coming from the browser before anything, including the user agent styles are actually defined. Uh, so that is, a wrong answer right there for Copilot, uh, which is again GTP4, some version of it. Here's Claude. Uh, Claude, uh, we asked the same question and it gave basically the same answer right there, so it also got it wrong. Uh, it did find the typo here in my background and fixed it. I do think um, Copilot found that as well. Uh, but yeah, it got it wrong right there. Uh, and next up is Gemini. and. To my surprise, Gemini got this right. <laughs> um, I, I haven't had good experience, especially with Gemini with CSS. So if we come and take a look here, uh, it says it here. Now, the thing is it got it right, but I'm not sure if it got it right for the right reasons. Cause it says that here it explains um, 35 rem, which is set to 32 pixels. It just doesn't, it never does the math there. Cause here it's saying, which translates roughly to 560 pixels, assuming the font size stays at 32, but that would be assuming that it stays at 16. Uh, so maybe it actually knows how this works and it just mistakenly explained it, or it just somehow got it wrong that ended up getting it a right answer. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the explanation here is a little bit worrisome, but overall the, the worrisome thing I think with it in general is just whenever they get them wrong, the way they talk makes you think they know what they're talking about. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, this is what it is, and we're gonna see a lot more of that as we go through with some of these other questions. Uh, so we'll stay here with Gemini for the next question, uh, which was, uh, which one of these is the correct answer? What is the difference between declaring display block or display inline versus declaring display flex or display grid? And I gave it a few different answers and it got the right one of C. I'm not gonna go in detail on any of these just cause uh, this video would become way too long. Uh, but it took C saying block and inline focus on the outer display value while flex and grid focus on the inner display value. Awesome, it got it right. And right here, the key difference, it, it actually explains it really well. Block and inline are for the outer display, flex and grid are, define the inner display value, creating a special formatting context. Um, for the children, and this is exactly right. You don't hear a lot about outer and inner display types, but that's exactly what's happening there. Uh, next up, we can see if Claude got this one right, and you can see it also did. Um, it also says why some of the other ones are incorrect as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, but again, the key thing is right there. And last up, does Copilot keep up uh, right there? Let's see, the correct answer is C. They all got that one right, fantastic. So we won't spend too much time on that one because they all, they all managed to figure that one out. Uh, next up, part of the cascade in CSS deals with the origin of styles, with the three origin types, user agent, user, and author styles. Which of these origins is the highest precedent? Author styles 
are the ones that we write. User agent are the browser styles. I just put that extra context because I copied and pasted from the question on, on YouTube. Uh, and this one, I tried purposely taking questions that I asked on my YouTube community page that I thought might trip it up. It's things that people would get wrong. And I assumed if people are getting it wrong, there's bad information out there about these things too. Um, so we have author styles, user agent styles, important user agent styles, and important author styles. And as I was expecting, it gave me the wrong answer, which is the one that I expect people to get. <laughs> um, so they're saying important author styles, which is incorrect. Uh, important is the highest precedence, that is correct, and is used with author styles. It will overwrite everything, including user agent and user styles. Uh, so even if the user, so this is just wrong. Let's see if the other one, any of the other ones get it right um, and we can examine from there. So Claude was up next. Uh, this one, important author styles, once again, they got it wrong. But what's interesting here, let's just see. Oh, here. However, when we use the important flag, it changes the order. The complete precedence order from lowest to highest is user agent, user author, author, user, user agent. So they actually got this correct here. <laughs> Therefore, important author styles have the highest precedence among the options given. So this is where I'm a little bit like, is it just not good at multiple choice? Because this is correct, and but what it's saying here goes against what it's saying here. Because here I have user agent important, which actually was uh, right here, important user agent. Uh, so I'm not sure why I picked the wrong one after explaining the right thing here. Uh, but whatever it did. And just in case you're wondering like, what is this true? Yeah, this is the order they go in and there are a few different things. You can look up the uh, user agent styles for all of the engines and you'll find a few important declarations in there. There's not very many, but they're all there for a reason. <laughs> um, so you can check those out. I forget what they are off the top of my head, but you cannot overwrite a user agent style if it has important. It's just impossible. So good to know on that front, but you, you'll very rarely <laughs> run into it. It's on things that shouldn't be changed uh, is why they're there. So that's like half a point maybe. <laughs> we'll see uh, if Gemini can beat it out. Um, Gemini also got it wrong. <laughs> they're all getting it wrong. Uh, and yeah, they just, they put the three of them here and then sort of assumed important goes in the same order. So Claude was the closest, but it still gave me the wrong answer. Oh, well, uh, no points, I think. <laughs> Do we give a half point? I don't know, maybe 0.25. I don't know, it's zero points. It's right or wrong, um, but it was the closest one. So I guess we can at least give it that. All right, next up, I'm working on a WordPress site and trying to do some custom CSS. They have a form group class. I need to overwrite an existing style that's coming from the theme, which has a specificity of zero to zero. Bit of a spoiler warning on this one, my, for, I've done a few things with specificity and in, in general asking AI for help and it runs into some issues. So we might see some interesting answers here. Uh, as long as my selector has equal specificity, it will not work. Which of these would get the job done? So part of the problem here is the phrasing of this question. I think it might have a bit of trouble with, but I said, if we have a form group, which matches that, would it work? Uh, a div form group, a form group, form group, or none of the above. And <laughs> Gemini goes with form group, yay. Uh, so again, this might be the, just the general idea of like, it's matching the form group here and it's ignoring the specificity part. But well, let's see. Uh, specificity in CSS is calculated based on a point system. Uh, <laughs> so it got the, the point system backwards. <laughs> One point for an ID, 10 points for classes, attributes, and pseudo selectors, and 100 points for element selectors. Uh, <laughs> what is it talking about? Um, in this case, the existing style has a specific, specific, gotta look, specificity of 0 to 0. This means it likely has two class selectors. Hey, awesome, got that right. Uh, it, it's, I wish I had an ID on there now to see if it would have really mucked it up. No ID and no elements. To achieve equal, we need a selector with two class selectors. Option A uses only the class selector form group, which matches the... <laughs> The only thing I would say here is at least it's so bad, this answer, that if somebody were reading this, they would know that it's wrong, right? We, <laughs> we need two class selectors, uses only one, and that matches this. <laughs> Usually they're good at like getting something wrong and then explaining why the wrong answer is right. In this case, they're not saying that. Uh, div form group adds unnecessary element type selector, which increases the spec, they really did. They flip specificity around. I wasn't sure about this, but no, 
uh, Gemini is currently saying, and I just want to say you might test this yourself and get a different answer. This won't happen every time. And that's the thing with these LLMs is the answers vary every time you ask them something, which is also kind of weird um, and, and problematic at times. Uh, but here we get a, 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 or I mean, you could say it's because it's learning more stuff, but it just cites a different thing. And here it, I don't understand this though. But <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Okay, form group form group duplicates the class selector unnecessarily. It would still have a specificity of, but it might be considered less performant. It wouldn't be less performant, by the way. Um, <laughs> or, if, or if it was, it's so small. Um, but I don't think it would even. Uh, and I like how it's unnecessarily doing it because my single class selector is the same. And D is incorrect because a well-crafted selector with equal specificity can indeed override an existing style. Um, What, what this is, well, using form group works in this case, it's recommended to be more specific in your selectors to avoid unintended consequences. You could consider adding another class specific to your customization, like my custom form. Why would you do that? Th this, I think we like subtract a point for Gemini because of how bad, this is a negative one point answer uh, from Gemini right there. Uh, let's see how Cloud can do on this one. Uh, Claude got it right. Nice. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. I'm not going to. So existing has zero to zero. This one got it right in terms of AB. They're doing ABC. So A is ID. B is the class selector. Blah, blah, blah. C, that's fine. Uh, it compares them all correctly here and it gets it right. Awesome. Perfect. Good job, Claude. Nice. I always like seeing that. Uh, and next up. If you're gonna get, uh, well, how's, okay, let's just see why it says that now. <laughs> Div form group. It's calculated, count one if the declaration is from a style attribute rather than a rule with a selector. Okay, count the number of IDs is equal to B. Okay, so it's not quite right, but what they're saying is they have like A, B, C, D. It doesn't really count to specificity, just I guess in a way, but it's always more important, right? Um, but whatever, it got this right. Zero ID is two class. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with everything it's set up to here, even if it's, I'm not, I wouldn't include that part, but whatever. Uh, looking at the group, form group is 101. That's correct. Div form group has zero. That's good. Form group, form group. That's good. This is incorrect because both C, B and C would work. The correct answer is B. However, it's worth noting that would also work. If the question was all possible, why? I like how it never explains why this one would work. It just says it will, even though it, so, so again, this is one of those times where if someone was reading this, they could at least use common sense to get the right one on like what we just saw uh, with Gemini before, uh, where it just was spewing crap. I guess you'd know it's wrong, but you might not know why it's wrong. Um, but here you could at least know which one is correct. But I just find it weird that it contradicts itself saying, you need that, whatever. I don't know. Uh, interesting. Next up, <laughs> let's say I have an element with a class of gallery. Inside, there are 12 siblings with a class of gallery item. If I am not hovering over anything, all of the items should have an opacity of one. When I hover over one gallery item, I want to select all of the siblings and reduce their opacity, but keep the opacity of the one I'm hovering at at one. This has a lot of potential for it just to misinterpret something and get it wrong, because I would probably want to read this twice before answering it. <laughs> and I wrote the question. Uh, which of these rules would accomplish that? Um, they're all there. No, da, 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 that would work. C is the correct answer. Okay, so um, it looks like it explains it properly. C is correct. That is Copilot getting that one right. Let's check how Claude does. Same question. Also gets C for that one. Awesome. Uh, it sort of this one. Cloud's kind of good because it explains why other stuff is wrong. Whereas when we're looking at Copilot, it just explains why the correct one is correct in general. We had that other part in the previous one where it, it sort of had a bit more information. Um, let's see for Gemini. Can Gemini also keep up um, even though it's in last place right now because of that negative one? It also got it right. There we go. So I guess this type of question it's able to answer because it can match the selectors decently enough. So that's kind of cool. Um, good to know. And this one also broke down the other options and explains why none of the other ones work. So that's kind of good. I like when you get that type of explanation, 
um, it is good that it's saying like, this is why this one's right, this is why these ones are wrong. Uh, you just have to be careful <laughs> because sometimes it says this and it, it, it's wrong. Um, but we'll skip over that one because they all got it right, so that's kind of boring. <laughs> um, next up, assume a user has not changed the default text size in their browser for this question. So we have a font size of 16 pixels. They have a section with a font size of calc one rem plus one vmin. You're bringing in some interesting units. If you were to give a child of this section a font size of 1.5 m, what would the font size be equivalent to? This one, when I asked it, uh, there was one of these that got a lot of answers that was wrong. Um, so that's kind of interesting. 24 plus one v min is incorrect, Gemini. It would be this one, I think. I'm doing. I haven't looked at the answers to this, but it, um, basically, you want it because it's M. It's taking the computed size of this calculation and then multiplying that entire thing by 1.5. So we can't just multiply the 16 by 1.5. We also have to multiply the V min by 1.5. So let's just look really fast to see. What is it talking about here? One second. This is Ge Gemini is is looks like it's kind of prone just to come up with some weird stuff. So here it's trying 16 plus 10, so it's getting 26. That I okay, but why is it doing that for one? We never had that. We have oh I did okay never mind. I thought we had the 1.5 there. So, okay, so this sort of makes sense. This means 1.5 times 26. That would be correct. It, it got the right math here. It's doing the right idea. However, the section's font size itself is calculated based on 1v min. Oh, and then it went off. So if the viewport changes, the section's font size and consequently the child font size will also change, yeah. Therefore, 24 plus one V mint. Oh. So it sort of went in the right direction here. It's weird it understood the M was based on the 24, but it doesn't seem to understand that the M is for the V min as well. So it's just defaulting that to, well, it's saying 10 pixels because it's trying to do math on that. Um, but yeah, it just got it wrong for some reason. Okay, uh, let's see how Claude does. Uh, da, 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 I got it right, nice. Claude is definitely in the lead. I haven't been keeping score in my head, but if I feel like it is, I'll keep a running tab of, of the actual score on screen as we go through this. Um, the correct answer to this question is good. Uh, so let's see if it got it right. One rem becomes one times 1.5. The one V min is one times 1.5. Uh, yeah, it just straight up explained it perfectly. Nice. Uh, and Copilot, how did Copilot do on this one? It did the same mistake as Gemini. Uh, is equivalent, that's okay. One V min, yes. So that is equivalent to that. So this is, I think, the mistake that it's actually making. So yeah, this is good. The one, 1 1.5 would be one. So this is correct. This is correct. However, the V min doesn't scale. Yes, it does. What are you talking? Okay. It seems to miss. Both of these are misunderstanding how font size works. You're right that it, it this is correct. This is incorrect. We're doing this calculation. We're combining those to get a value and then multiplying that by 1.5 for the M. So, and what the what these two are doing is they're looking at V min and saying, well, they don't scale in that same way, but like it, it turned the rem into pixels. So why not turn the V min into pixels? If that makes sense, which Gemini tried to do, but then it's still crapped out on the answer. So Gemini was pushing maybe the right way. Um, but there's, I guess, like a little bit of a misconception on how M's work, especially with a calc, which just, I probably threw it off and there's probably not a lot of training data out there, but hey, Claude got it right. So no excuses, you other two. Oh, true or false. This should be easy. True or false on a block level element with auto and with 100% are the same. A lot of people think they are, they are not. Um, auto is much more useful most of the time, unless you need something to be a hundred percent because you are overriding something basically, or yeah. Uh, if it's absolute or fixed stuff, sometimes you need to do that. Um, if you want more on that, I put a video, we'll put a card there <laughs> and I'll put a, a link in the description probably. 
I forget those sometimes, I apologize. Uh, in CSS, they're the s they are not the same. Awesome. 100% take up the full width, excluding any padding, border, or margin. With auto means the browser will calculate the width of the, for block level elements. I should have specified, oh, I did say block, okay. Uh, this typically means that the element will extend the full width of the parent, but it may be different. Da, 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 da. Well, I mean, that's the true, even if you have the width here. I don't really like the explanation, but it got it right, so it gets a point. <laughs> uh, let's see how Claude does. Also saying false, that's good. Width, the element will expand to fit the width. It respects padding border margins. It allows the element to shrink if there's not enough space. The element will be exact. See, this is a better explanation right there. Um, this is also true, and it overflows if padding or borders are added, or margin is added. Um, any of them added would be good. It also says by default here, because if you do the box sizing border box, then it's only margins that would um, cause the overflow after that. So yeah, that looks like it's a, a very good explanation. Claude, another point that Copilot did, oh no, Copilot got a point for that one too, um, but Claude was better. Uh, and let's check out in CSS, false, nice. They all got it right. Uh, <laughs> We don't really need that. Instructs the element size based on the content, sets it 100%, it's directs parent width, including, no. No. <laughs> but this is right. This, it doesn't include the padding or border of the element, does it? No, it doesn't. This is, this is wrong, but this is correct. Because if, if this were correct, if you added any padding, it would just always overflow as if the parent had any padding or borders on it. Yeah, so that's incorrect, but it still got it right. So again, Claude has the best answer uh, right there. All right, uh, but they all managed to get the point because they all got, technically they all got it right. And just really quickly before we dive into this next question, if these types of fundamental questions or things with CSS are the types of things that sometimes trip you up as well and you just wanna deepen your understanding of CSS, I do have courses on CSS. There's free courses and premium courses that I both have. You can check the link in the description. Uh, there's ones for all different levels and everything. So depending on where you are in your journey, I'm sure you'll be able to find something there if that's the type of thing that you're interested in. But if you're here just for seeing the AI train wreck continue, well, you're in the right place because we're gonna keep on going right now with this one here. I have an element with a font size of 1.25M. Ooh, <laughs> so the other one threw it off. Let's see if this throws these off too. Uh, and inside that element is a paragraph with a font size of 1.125 rem. So here we're talking about relationships. So this is like a red herring. Let's see if they pick up on that or not. Because this is in rem, this doesn't matter at all. The paragraph has a padding of 1.25m. Assuming the root font size is 16 pixels, what would the padding be? It would be 1.25 times 1.125 because this is rem and then the padding looks at that value. So you do 16 times 1.125 times 1.25. I don't remember which one it is though. <laughs> One second, I'm going to bring up my calculator fast. So if my quick uh, math was correct, it would be 22.5. Uh, so B. So let's see. That's a great question. Thank you, uh, Gemini. <laughs> I appreciate that. How is it getting D? <laughs> what? We're given the root font size of 16. The elements font size is 1.25M. So it got it to 20 is relative to the element, no it's not. Okay, so there it goes off the, so Gemini got caught by that red herring that I set. It's adding that extra level in that it shouldn't have and then multiplying it again. Completely wrong. Um, and it's relative to the elements font, it just got rem wrong. This <laughs> is basically what happened there. Uh, Claude, let's see if uh, you can get it right. I'm assuming it will based on what it's done so far. Yay, we got it right. Uh, so we have 20, the paragraph's font size is, there we go, uh, rem is always relative to the root font size. Look at that. It's showing off now, in my opinion, compared to the answer we just got from Gemini. Uh, and then it does the rest of the math. And Copilot. Can Copilot get it right? Um, they got it wrong as well, but different wrong, which is interesting. Uh, the font size of the parent element would be, yes, that's okay. Therefore, a padding of one point would be 25 pixels. However, there is a mistake in the question. The padding should, be, <laughs> it's telling me that the padding should be something different. Oh, this is fantastic. 
there's a mistake in the question. The padding should be 1M, not 1.25 for the answer to be 20. But I never said the answer was 20. You said the answer was 20. If the padding is that, the correct answer would be 25, which is not an option provided in the answers that is right there. <laughs> so assuming there's a typo in the question, the padding should be 1M and the correct answer would be 20. But if the padding is, this was this is a negative one for Copilot. Uh, for several reasons. First of all, it had the right an well, it thought the right answer was 25 and then said that's not an option, which it was an option of. So that's a knock right there. Then the other knock is it just didn't understand the question because I said inside that element is a paragraph with a font size of 1.125 rem and it just ignored that completely. Uh, it, it doesn't even mention that anywhere here. It just somehow it got stuck on the red herring that I put and then it, and I even said it's an element paragraph. How did it, the font size of the parent, did it, the padding, yeah. It, it just skipped a section of the information. So that's a negative one point for Copilot for not only getting it wrong, but getting it very wrong. Um, and ignoring pertinent information and ignoring the wrong answer that it thought was the right answer. It's also interesting because it had the A there and it had the C were sort of its two favorite answers, which were both wrong. And Gemini got that one, which was also wrong. Um, so you know what, uh, Gemini, um, oh no, it wasn't that one. It was, uh, yeah, it was Gemini. I think they said, that's a great question. So clearly it was, because they all managed to, to muck it up there. <laughs> Let's start with Copilot for this next one. Um, which, of the, which one of these is not a real CSS unit? The CI, the RLH, the VB, or the Q. This is one of the few questions where the majority of the answers on my YouTube community page were wrong. Almost all of them, the majority is strongly on the right answer, and then there's sort of a spread. Sometimes there's one of the answers that sort of gets some people. This one, the majority of people answered Q, uh, and Q is an actual unit. It's a real unit in, I forget what it is. It's, it's in the metric system though. Uh, the correct answer is CI, hey. Gemini got it right. <laughs> CSS, they are all valid units. Gemini, you're redeeming yourself. I just assumed it was gonna get them all wrong, basically, with how poorly it was doing. Even though it was the only one who got that first question right, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, RLH represents the root element in vertical media. What does that mean? <laughs> What's vertical media? No. It doesn't, no, okay, it got that wrong, but I still give it, it doesn't represent the font size of anything. When used in vertical media, that's really interesting. I, it, it's root line height. It's the line height of your root font size, or the root, not even the font size of your root thing. Whatever the fonts, the, whatever the line height is, so if you have line height 1.6 and you have a font size of 16 pixels, you can do that math, and that's the RLH unit, uh, what one RLH would be. VB is not a standard CSS unit. It might be a typo or a custom unit in a specific context. This is viewport um, VB block, like you have v, VI, viewport inline, VB, viewport block, which is block is the vertical, so it would be basically the same as your viewport H, VH, uh, VB and VH, uh, unless you change your writing direction, um, but most of the time VB will be the same as VH. Um, it's just the logical property equivalent of it. Q represents a quarter of the... <laughs> oh, I'm giving it a point for actually getting the answer right, but I'm knocking it a point back off for getting everything else wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, it said this isn't a standard one. It might be a typo. And then here it's saying it's not a recognized... I think it chose this one because it was the first one. I think if I put any of these units first, it would have chosen any of these units. Um, I do like that it says that CI would also be incorrect. Oh, I, wait, I said CI. Yeah, yeah, CI is the correct one. Sorry, I thought I had a different wrong answer. Um, this does not represent a quarter of the height of the parent's elements font. That would be kind of interesting if we had that. It's it's literally making stuff up here. Like there's no way, it, it just guessed at all of these. There's no way, it couldn't find anything, so it just tr tried to figure out what these things could be. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, this is amazing <laughs> how bad these are. Ver yeah, it, it had no idea. And I'm, act act I'm really curious why it chose vertical media here. Like why, what in this m made it think of vertical media? 
I love it. <laughs> I love how bad it is. <laughs> uh, okay, Claude got it right. Let's see if it got it actually right or if it got it right for the wrong reasons as well. RLH, this is a real CSS unit. It stands for root line height and is equal to the computed value of the line height. But look at that, nice. Uh, VB, this is a real unit, viewport based unit that represents 1% of the size of the initial containing block in the direction of the root elements block axis. Q, this is a real unit. It's 1 40th of a centimeter. We got them all. It's a real CSS unit. Thank you. And it's not just a CSS unit. It's a real unit. I don't know why it's capitalized and I don't know what it stands for, but it is real. CI is not a real one. There is nothing. Awesome. Ah, oh, there. Q is for quarter of a millimeter. A tiny, tiny unit. Um, but yeah, there we go. Awesome. Hey, Claude, is it, despite the first one getting it wrong, and I think it had another one, I'm kind of impressed by how well it's doing, especially compared to how poorly um, some of these other ones are doing. Uh, but let's see here in Copilot. Copilot. CI. Uh, oh, I was in Copilot and not Gemini before. Maybe I said that off the top. For some reason, I thought I was in Gemini. Uh, okay, let's see how Gemini did. Which one of these is not a real unit? Out of the, uh, VB is not a real unit. CI, the mo <laughs> it's making stuff up too. Gemini and, and, and Copilot making stuff up together. <laughs> this is the mo this most likely refers to centimeters as a valid length of, a valid so centimeters is a valid length, but I mean, <laughs> it most likely refers to means it's wrong. RLH isn't a common unit in CSS, but it could potentially be an abbreviation for a custom unit defined within a style sheet. Can you define custom units in style sheets? Because as far as I know, you can't do that. And if you could, that would be kind of cool. This letter doesn't represent any standard unit of measurement and is highly unlikely to be used in CSS. Uh, so we, we saw that was wrong. It is a standard unit of measurement that exists in the real world. Uh, therefore, based on common usage and established units, VB is most likely counting. So it told me, oh no, this one it's saying most likely refers to. So it sort of told me it's wrong. This one says it's not right, but it's saying maybe it could be because it's customly done. This one it's saying it's not right, but probably wouldn't work. So because these are all probably not units, that one clearly isn't a unit, I guess. Um, <laughs> so if, if I click through to here, I could actually get all of those units. Let's do that. Let's click through. <laughs> Are they going to be here? Okay. Look, Q is right there. So Q, Q is named within one of the sources it just cited. Nice. Let's keep going down. Let's see if we can get into M's, REM's. That's not the right one. So I looked quickly and I didn't find uh, any of the other ones, but it, you'd think at least like if you're if you're stating this as a source and one of them is there, that should be a little bit of a hint at least. Um, and you're, I mean, it's citing a good source there. I don't know what the, the other one was, um, W3 schools, which I'm guessing it's a little outdated, but you never know. Let's just look really fast. Oh, so this one didn't, so maybe it only looked at this one because Q isn't listed there. That's always possible. Uh, it also doesn't list some of the other ones. I think it only looked at these units and said they all weren't real. That's my guess, and it didn't even bother looking anywhere else since that was the first thing it cited right there. Maybe. It didn't even really cite it though. The sources and related content were GitHub. I just want to see. It's using a random repo <laughs> on GitHub as its source. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, let's keep going. This week, we'll go with a bit more of a beginner question. Ooh, so I hope it, it, it's going to get this one right, right? If all these rules were in a single CSS file, which one would win based on the HTML? Uh, so we just have a regular list, nav a, okay, there's whatever we have. It's saying in this scenario, based on the, this rule would win nav, nav link. <laughs> Why? That's wrong. It would be C because C has two this isn't even, oh no, it was an option. Okay. Nav lit, this is, has the highest specificity. So the answer should be C, uh, right? I, I hope I'm getting it right. But yeah, looking at it quickly, I'm pretty sure it should be C. So for some reason it thinks it's that. So here's why all of the selectors target elements within the nav element specificity. We need to compare Gemini is just bad at specificity because it's saying my nav nav link. So, <laughs> 
my nav A has a specificity of 101. It's saying it has one class, which I don't understand why. Uh, <laughs> this one has two with two classes, but nav, okay, whatever. Similar to B, but with a different class order even though we don't have two classes there. And then this one somehow has three element types, even though there's a class in the middle. If you wanted to use option D, you would need to change it to this. We'd have to add an element selector, which still wouldn't work. And even here, it's saying this would make it 0, 1, 2, and override B due to the higher weight of the element types, which is correct. It would overwrite option B in that case, but it just told me that option B has a 0, 2, 0, and it's saying now that this would don't ask Gemini any questions related to specificity. We're going to go to Copilot next um, and see if it gets it right. Uh, oh, it got it right. Awesome. Okay. A little bit surprised, but <laughs> it got it right. Uh, it's going through this ABCD thing again, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> they're all good. Yeah. Correct. Incorrect. Why is it? It doesn't seem to understand the system it built for itself here. <laughs> um, but at least it's sort of on the right track. It's because it's saying that the first number here at the end should be for inline attributes. But then it's treating this one as the class one. But as long as it would be consistent and then it would put IDs here instead, I guess it would be fine. Um, whatever, it got it right for the right reasons, basically. So cool. Um, and now on to Clodo, I'm going to assume is going to get this one right. Let's analyze it. This is the correct one. And it got it right for the right reasons. Just looking at that really fast. And it's explaining specificity better than the other ones did. Uh, cool. Let's jump back to Copilot for the next one. I'm just going to do Clode last from here on out. There's not too many left. Uh, just because it seems to be actually getting the ones right on the most frequent basis. <laughs> so, uh, which of these does not create a new stacking context? Uh, clip path, container type, opacity, or order? Hmm, this one, <laughs> the answer is order two. Uh, I think that's actually correct. Stacking context is formed from certain properties. Da, da, da. Clip path property, when it has a value other than none, creates a stacking context. Container type inland side, this seems to be a mix up. I love when it's like, this This isn't a thing. There is no container type property in CSS, but contain layout or contain paint would create, so this is actually, so container type inline size is actually causing a contain of layout to happen. Um, I say with not very much confidence. It does create a contain. I don't. I think it must be layout. Um, so we create a new st stacking context. If the container type inline size is meant to refer to a containment context, which it is, um, so it just doesn't seem to realize container type exists, which is a bit newer. So I don't know when this is copilot, uh, which would be GTP4. I guess it, I don't know what it's being trained on or when it got cut off from training, but it's close enough in its right answer. And this is also correct. Uh, the order property does not create a new stacking context and only affects the order. Cool. Copilot. I'm impressed. Uh, let's go see Gemini who, <laughs> um, opacity 0.5. You're not, to, I, I, knocking it out of the park, it set expectations high by being the only one to get the first question right, even though we sort of figured out it probably wasn't right for the right reasons, but still, it was the only one, and since then, it's been a train wreck. <laughs> uh, these options, um, granted, I didn't do the advanced thing, I didn't want to pay uh, for, for, for this one. Um, maybe that would have been better, but still, like, I, I went free on all of these. Um, maybe there's the newer versions are better. They're always going to get better, but still, the, the train wreck of this is quite amusing. Properties that create stacking context. Opacity, except when opacity is one. When opacity is less than one, it creates a new stacking context. This does not create a stacking context. <laughs> uh, Z index, position, transform, filter, mix blend mode, isolation. Okay. Clip path creates a new one. This is, hey, it knows this though. So this is more up to date than Copilot um, was. This property introduced for container queries creates a new stacking context. Nice. The order property when used in models to define da, 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 respectively, it doesn't directly affect stacking order of elements relative to elements outside the layout. In conclusion, opacity can create a new stacking context 
And in this case, with it, it does. Other options all introduce effects or layout behaviors that... <laughs> this is the right answer. In this case, it does create a new stacking context. And it seemed to just not understand that order doesn't, I guess, which is weird. You'd think, like, it... <laughs> Opacity, oh, we don't have interesting. In this list that it had, it doesn't have clip path, but then here it does specifically say that clip paths do. Hmm, I don't know, I don't get why I got it wrong. Uh, and let's check here, order two. Yeah, okay, I got it right. I was like, wait, <laughs> that one does, that one does, that one does. It doesn't really give too much information. That one doesn't, perfect, cool. Uh, let's go back to Gemini. <laughs> Which one of these is not a valid CSS property? So I asked this on purpose um, on, on my channel and I was curious. This one mostly is like modern CSS stuff. So um, does it know enough about it? Translate, rotate, scale, or skew. All of the options, translate, rotate, scale, and skew are valid CSS properties. No, they're not. These properties are all part of the transform property. Yes, they are, but they're not. <laughs> they're part of them as values. So they're all values of my, they're all value functions of my transform property, but translate, rotate, and scale are also their own properties now standalone. Like it's just saying all of them are, so it didn't go like, oh, it's the first one and then the other ones also are, because sometimes it seems to do that. Uh, this doesn't really surprise me that it answered that, just saying they're part of transform. Um, so that's okay-ish, still wrong, but uh, let's see how Copilot does translate is not a valid CSS property. Translate, rotate, scale, and skew are transform functions, there we go, uh, in CSS, but they're not standalone properties. They are used as values for the transform property, like so. That is correct. There's no standalone transform property. So it's kind of interesting that it stopped at that one uh, and just didn't look at the other answers. That's what I was saying, actually, just for, for Copilot, uh, Gemini, right? I thought it would just stop. Um, at the first one it got wrong because it seems to be a recurring pattern. If it picks one of them, it doesn't evaluate the other ones as much or even it, it'll answer with it, but it doesn't, it, it still picks the first thing that it thinks is wrong. Uh, so once again, Copilot wrong there. Um, sort of what I was expecting to be honest. And all of them are valid CSS properties. Ooh, so here, oh, again, we're getting it there. Ooh, ooh, we got, we got to knock points for that. Each of these can be used as individual properties in modern CSS. SKU cannot, these three can. So I'm actually surprised with how well Claude's been doing. I thought it would get this one right uh, and it just got it wrong. Oh well, <laughs> it happens, it happens. Uh, it's good to know that it's not perfect either. Um, cool, okay, that's fine. We'll go back to Gemini. Gemini, which of these has the highest specificity? I, I think I added this in. Um, this is, again, it is from my community, but I, I was seeing how poorly they were doing at specificity related questions. Uh, I was expecting it this to throw them off. So we'll see how it goes. Um, required. Hey, I think that's correct. <laughs> specificity, one point for, I, oh, it's, we're getting into this crap again, 100 points for our element selectors. So this is where they hallucinate a little bit, right? They get something wrong and then they just bring back that wrong information over and over again. Uh, and Gemini for some reason came up with this point system that's wrong. So this is also wrong. This is a complex selector, didn't it? It has a, specif it has a specificity of nothing because the the star stars count for nothing and combinators count for nothing. So this one would actually be zero. Placeholder, yeah, pseudo, wait, this, yeah, pseudo elements are like element selectors. So that would be one point here, not two. I don't know why I gave it two. We just did placeholder, right? Yeah, so that should be one, not two. Required, it got that one right. This uses the unsupported where pseudo class, not implemented in major browsers yet. So it's a little bit dated, the information it has here, but it understands what it's doing at least. Uh, where is widely supported at this point. Um, but at least it understood what it was which not bad. Uh, option D would have the lowest, ignoring the unsupported selector because it only has an ID selector, but it still got it right. So Gemini, good, good for you. Uh, yeah, surprising. Uh, let's see if Copilot can keep up. <laughs> we threw it off. Uh, and that doesn't surprise me because this one seems to be the one on the most dated um, information. So that one's correct though. It got that, this one, it got better because the star selector has zero specificity. So Copilot is better there. Placeholders, 
correct, required, correct. The where pseudo class has no specificity, but it doesn't change. Oh, so that's interesting. It knows what where it is. It's saying it doesn't have specificity, but it doesn't change the specificity of the selectors inside of it is just wrong. Uh, it does change the specificity. It, anything inside of the little braces there for aware uh, means it has, it just doesn't contribute to specificity. So actually, this is sort of what I was hoping would happen <laughs> uh, if it was going to get it wrong, and that's it got it wrong. And, and that was even for people. Like I was expecting people to pick that one too uh, in that one. And 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 required, it got it right, correct, correct. And there we go, specificity of zero. Nice. Uh, so Claude coming to the rescue on that one once again. So my, so we have a little bit further to go. Um, Oh, okay, so we're on the last question now, I think. Uh, so let's go to Gemini. Um, so it definitely clothes like the winner so far. All right, and the last question here that I gave it, or I gave all of them was based on what I saw them answering for these other things, but I didn't want to give it a multiple choice. I came up with this question and I wanted to do two things. I wanted to make it more of something that like, here's a problem I'm having, how would you solve this? Because I think that's more how people use these tools than giving them multiple choice questions. Uh, but I also wanted to throw some modern CSS in there. So I did use CQI because I just saw that the modern CSS stuff was a little bit sketchy with these. So the font size is getting too small. How can I stop it from getting smaller than 1.125 rem? I want to be very specific with that. And so I said the font size is currently for CQI, which is container query inline, font weight, font, those don't really matter. Uh, option one, using a clamp. That is a good choice, except it <laughs> decided to put centimeters here for some reason, <laughs> instead of my four CQIs. Uh, it takes three values. I mean, I could just put this as a four CQI and then I guess it would fix my thing. Let's see if the explanation comes in. I love that it's putting four centimeters here. And then, ooh, this is a bit awkward. I don't really like this, the option two. The option one here was sort of what I was hoping to see. Um, this creates a media query, da, 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 that's fine. Um, clamp is a good choice. Rem or M are better for responsiveness instead of centimeters. Yeah, because you changed it from centimeters. Oh, and then I asked it what a CQI was in CSS. A proposed unit relative to container queries, but is not widely supported. It is now. Here's a breakdown of what it is. So, yeah, I was just I'm like, it didn't seem to recognize the CQI, and then so I asked it just after, um, and then it gave me some explanation on it. Uh, so I don't know what why it, it decided to change things to centimeters here, but whatever. <laughs> At least it sort of got in the right direction. Uh, let's see how Copilot did. All right. Uh, the font size is set to four CQI, but CQI is not a recognized unit. You might want to correct that. <laughs> so this is actually really interesting though. They're using a min function. Now I wouldn't use M. It would have been better if that was viewport units instead of M. It would make more sense. Assuming you meant M instead of that. Okay. But the using, oh no, no, it should have used a max function. No, I said don't get smaller than. Yeah. So if this kept it as four viewport units or my four CQI, this is actually a better answer than Gemini gave us uh, with Copilot here because it's, I said just don't get smaller than something. I didn't say don't have an upper bound. And the min would do that. It would say it would prevent it from ever getting too big, but it would allow it to grow as big as it needs to grow. So potentially a better answer using the min function there. And let's see how Claude does. Um, it uses the max instead. Oh, you know what? No, I said the min would be better. The max would be better. <laughs> I got that one wrong looking at that, um, mixing my head, head up a little bit. This is the right answer. Claude nailed it. It kept my CQIs and it put it in a max. So it, yeah, choose the bigger of these two values. So for CQI was smaller than 1.125, it would use that one. Thank you, Claude, for correcting me. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't finish the video on me saying the wrong thing there. Um, it also fixed a typo by the looks of it as well, <laughs> which is good. But yeah, this this is basically exactly what it should do. Use the bigger of these two values. So if that was smaller than this, it would use that one. And if the 4CQI is bigger, then it would use the 4CQI. Max, not min there. Um, perfect, good job. Uh, Claude, definitely the winner. I think that uh, it's still got enough things wrong that I'm always a little bit nervous trusting these tools. Uh, they're gonna continue to get better, uh, but just be really careful if you're using them, I think is the, the end. 
thing here that I have to say, because it always says things with the utmost confidence. So just don't copy paste code they're giving you. May, try and understand the code they're giving you and see if it actually makes sense. Um, especially like they'll just say stuff isn't true that is true and vice versa. They'll make stuff up that isn't true and say that it's true. And then their source will be some r completely random GitHub repo. So <laughs> be a little bit careful uh, with these tools if you're using them. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you might also enjoy this video that is right here. And with that, I'd really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons, as well as all of my channel members. Thank you all very much for your support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.